I'm flying from Los Angeles to Asheville, North Carolina. My name is Zach. I am friends with the band Wednesday. They released an album in April called Rat Saw God, and they've been touring basically everywhere, overseas, here in the States. It's been really cool to watch my friends become so big in the indie rock scene and to watch others become such big fans of people I've been fans of for so long. Asheville is a home that I shared with the band for a long time. I wanted to come back and say hi and bring a camera along with me because I think there's something really special about living and creating down here in the South. I don't know, there's just something about it down here that doesn't feel like anywhere else. And I think that that makes for music that doesn't sound like anything else. I can't help myself but to look into the camera when you put it on me like that. Dude, this is so amateur of me, but it set the pieces up wrong. Yeah. The whole thing's pretty fucked, actually. Do we need to restart? Yeah. Okay. This is Alan. Alan's so fucking funny. He's, uh, he's probably of the band, of everyone in the band who I know the least well, but I adore him. I don't know him quite as well because he lives in Durham, North Carolina. So he's always commuting up here to Asheville to meet with the band and practice, record, whatnot. But he loves driving, or at least he says he does. Zandy is homesteading in this area outside of Asheville called Marshall. Ooh. What was that? Just a big rock, huh? Should we take I, a look? Yeah, I need to look at that. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, don't be. That was insane. That was that really sounded, loud. That sounded wrong. Oh, someone's coming down. All right. <laughs> hey, how's it going, Squeaky? Pretty good. How was it today? Hey, it's pretty good. We got into a bunch of bees. Oh, yellow jackets? Yeah. Man, I just actually hit a nest right outside my house today, too. They didn't sting me because I saw them. You all right? Yeah, I got stung one time. Not bad. That's not too bad, yeah. Smell those tires burning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this is the house. For the last several years, anytime Zandy hasn't been working on music, it's seemed like he's been working on the house, the farm, the land up here. Got a couple eggs here. Fresh from the cloaca. When I think about Ethan, I think about unmatched musical talent. You got a couple of pianos. Well, that's, is that an organ? Yeah, that's a pump organ. Ethan and I played in a couple bands together. We made a couple movies together. He works on video games in his spare time. It's really pretty. I haven't actually played it that much. I guess I spend a lot of time on tour thinking about, like trying to think through something on the piano. He's an incredible musician. And even though he plays bass on Wednesday, when I think of Ethan, I think of keys. I think of him on the piano. This is the bird sanctuary. In the last couple of months, I've been coming here a lot. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi. Yeah, this is jewelweed. I forget the scientific name, but um, you can rub it on yourself and it's like a good poison ivy antidote. Jake's funny, man. He's always got something to say. I get pretty tan. No big deal. <laughs> That's my problem with smoking weed. So I always feel like uh, maybe I shit myself, and I, don't, I just wouldn't know. And I start thinking about that, and you gotta go check, and it's like, it never happens. I caught a rock. It's real easy to hang out with Jake and just sort of lose track of time. Will you hold this for a second? 
I think he's looking for the poetry and ugly things. Today, I guess he's looking for fish. Maybe we should go that way. I don't know if this is a good spot. I think it might be too deep. Yeah, this water's looking a little fast. Carly talks a lot about how she doesn't get out much. She's really just trying to exist and create. Being up on stage can be an awkward fit for a known introvert. So she interacts with fans in a more personal way by making clothes that they can wear, or she hand sews a lot of her merch. <laughs> They're really good. Well, my mom got me this like mannequin from a store, and I usually just throw the shirt on there, pin a bunch of, like pin all the letters to it, cut them out, and that usually takes like 30 minutes. <laughs> and then I slap them on there. That takes about 45 minutes to an hour. So did you teach yourself to sew as well? You can learn a lot just from looking at someone do it for a long time. The hardest part is getting the thread to like come out of the machine right, and that takes like an hour to learn how to do. And after that, you literally just are pushing fabric through the machine, and it's sewing. Where you want me? This is like a really hilarious tank top that usually I only see these in like tiny boys size. So very hilarious for someone that wants a little cut off. Then I got like an eggplant sweater. I think of Asheville, I think of Hawk Creek first. It's this big open space, a bunch of acres of creek and fields and woods with a bunch of houses on it too. So many of my friends have lived on this specific tract of land in Hawk Creek because of our dear friend Colin. His family moved here when he was a kid and he's lived here ever since. I'm Colin Miller. I live next door to Jake and Carly, and I recorded the first Wednesday record in this house. He's close with the uh, old landlord of this property, Gary, who recently passed away. We all really miss Gary. Gary King is like the king of Hawk Creek. He was my landlord for about 13 years, uh, and he died around this time last year. And this is his mower. He's known Zandy since Zandy was 16, and he's known Jake since Jake was 17 or 18 and he met Carly and probably when Carly was still in college. Well, I was kind of the only girl kind of out here, so he was very protective of me. Me and Jake always talk about it. When he would ask Jake about me, he'd always go, how's your wife, my girlfriend? And that's like my favorite Gary line. Well, this was Gary's favorite place in the world. Um, he married into a family that owned this place and that used to have a tobacco farm and uh, a cow pasture on it. I think it's our favorite place in the world too. We record here, we practice here. Every part of the music process benefits from, from living in a place like this. Recording them, I feel like you, you get to go into each one of these people's twisted little minds and, and see what comes out. In a taller general, he took to How many people have called this place home since, since your folks left? Of the ones that have like actually lived here, probably about 10. Almost every single one of them are musicians. 
it's been a nice creative spot, but it's also just so beautiful and like Gary was really cool to us. And it's nice to, we've been able to make a lot of noise there. <laughs> and so we've always had band practice there. It's awesome. I'm super lucky to just kind of fallen into that. Knowing Colin, we became friends because we both played music and uh, a few other people that we played music with cycled through that house where me and Carly are now. Hawk Creek is where I met, or like I started, I moved, I moved in with Jake. Like everything that has contributed to the way my life and career is now and relationship, like literally all the most important aspects of my life happened in that house. Wednesday has always known that this is a temporary setup. When Gary goes, the land will have to be sold. And sure enough, while I was down in Asheville filming with the band, we found out that the Hawk Creek land was put under contract. A potential buyer put down money on the property and it seems like now it's just a matter of months before everyone has to pack up and leave. Texted Colin and I was like, has the guy in charge of like this property message you anything about the fact that this house is under contract, which I realized meant that like someone has made an offer and it was accepted. Um, and Colin was basically like, yeah, like the guy's gonna see um, if he can build what he wants to build out here. But either way, you should plan to be out by spring. I don't know, there would never be enough time for me to feel like really I've made peace with love, like leaving this place. Cause I'm like, I identify with it so intensely. like. Jake's self-titled album is on this front porch and so many of our music videos are in the yard and I wrote so many of the songs here and there are a lot of the songs are about here and I think it'll be good to like move on to the next chapter of my life like I had to with all the other houses I lived in but I've just never been so attached to a place. And yeah, just all the memories that we have with Gary and each other and band practice, we practiced in our bedroom for years. Change is definitely coming. Get a life. That's what I gotta say to anyone who finds this interesting. Shout out to Carly and Jake for letting me like eternally occupy this space whenever I'm here. I sleep on this couch. I basically use uh, Carly's plush pushmallows. What are they called? Squishmallows as a as a pillow, and they work surprisingly well. The couch is actually really cozy. My friends sleep just through here. We joke that. Uh, their bedroom. There's a scene in like Borat, the first Borat movie where he shows off his house in Kazakhstan. And it kind of looks exactly like this, honestly. What are you guys doing? Basically just like want to downplay all of the period. It's peaceful out at Hot Creek. It's the sort of place you can hear yourself think and spend time with your thoughts. I haven't named these chickens because the last ones I named all got eaten. Oh. The chickens will go in the house if you leave the door open, which is, I did twice today and like had to like chase them out angrily. <laughs> and then there's the root cellar down here. It literally means like it's a great place to store roots, root vegetables. This is where I keep all the wine we got made. That was all for stuff I harvested up here. And then we got like blackberry wine, which is stuff I harvested up here. And Oh yeah. Four. That's luck. That's, That's good luck. luck. Were you a Boy Scout? No. 
No, I didn't. I didn't do that. That's Dennis. He um, he's a friend of ours. He was the bartender at the Moth Light, where we used to play all the time. Carly and Zandy used to work there too. That's kind of where we started getting following and becoming professionals. I like to be a little aggressive with my pawns. That's cute. I want to learn how to talk about chess in Spanish, but it's got all these like different words. I guess this is, I guess that's how different languages are, right? <laughs> it's fucking bright. <laughs> We're kind of a gamer band. That's the thing that people don't want to know about us. It's the thing that the labels don't want you to find out about us either. Dude, this segment is just going to be awful. <laughs> All right, all right, enough bullshit. It's time to kill. I'm super excited to go to New York tomorrow to record a jazz trio record. You getting the turtles here? I was hoping they would be here. One of them has like a significant amount of moss growing on its back. I feel like people are gonna start coming up to me at our shows now and giving me fishing tips, which clearly I need. Oh, you know what? I don't know why this is happening. You gotta inspect your shit sometimes. Oh, yeah. This is a house I lived in with the first bassist of Wednesday. His name was Julian. He had a big, scary dog. Jake and Andrew would like write songs out on this porch for like until like 4 a.m. and drink like two bottles of wine. I don't know, I also learned how to sew in this house. Like, so much creative energy happening. I think there's just like a lot of like crazy shit going on the street, cause it's like basically, like we're right next to downtown. Um, some guy just went through and like slashed everyone's tires on the street, including me and Jake's. Um, and we ended up on the news. Mm. Everybody is kind of after the same thing, which is like the wonderful water and air and natural resources this place can offer. What we're doing out here is kind of a thing that a lot of people dream of doing. Yeah. And I understand why, especially when 2020 kind of went down. I had never been more thankful for living in a place like this. Yeah. All of us have like pretty good lives carved out here in different stages, of course. What do you think suffers more, mental or physical health on the road? Mm. It's a pretty holistic like tax on the yeah. mind and body. I mean, it's really fun. It's I'm sure there are way more like mentally and physically taxing things to be doing, but I do always come back like with a really strong desire to stretch, stretch and yeah. be outside and be alone. We just got back from the West Coast. It was so fun. We we got such a wide range of activities 
Maybe Alan talked about it some, but we like camped at Pickathon and then oh, stayed at like, yeah, it was really cool. I just remember Alan came into Zandy's tent and he's like, this is so cute. It's like Boy Scouts in here. <laughs> it was really sweet. When I come back, it's really mostly just like relief, especially because it's just like crowds all the time and like, then you're in the van and it's like, there's like road noise yeah. all day and then there's music and then there's like, you're hanging with your friends and talking or you have headphones in. It's like, no, nothing is ever quiet ever on tour. It's like never like silent out here either, but like the noises are just like completely soothing. It feels like my brain is like getting a massage when I come back. When touring is kind of tricky, once you get in the van, it's like no longer just your relationship. It's like you're in a relationship with with the whole band. That San Francisco festival was crazy. It was like there were some pretty high profile bands there. And just like the backstage scene at those is crazy. Like Conan O'Brien was hanging out. We were out in the crowd. But we could have been we could have been chilling with Conan and Death Grips were back there. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Shit. We saw their set and uh, Zandy threw up in the mosh pit. <laughs> the expectations I had for Rat Saw God when it came out were totally over what I could have ever estimated. And like the shows that were selling out, I would have never assumed that that's the way my career would go. So it's all like pleasant surprises, I think. I mostly just want to stay like taking care of myself so I can keep writing and like releasing decent music. I don't know, I feel like really proud about where our catalog is at right now and I'm not really embarrassed to play any of our songs which feels really good because I would have said I was like not too long ago. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. This is bad. I feel like every time you go to write something new you're just kind of back to square one and you just you have to you have to wade through so much of your own garbage. And I think just being around Carly, making stuff all the time makes me a lot better. So a lot of my favorite things are like on our album covers, which is cool, because I love our Bull Believer doll. Yeah. I think that's kind of one of the little spices of life. Yeah. Like romance and spooky <laughs> and like funny. That's like my, that's like the best stuff. So many of these illustrations are your own, right? Mm -hmm. I did all of these in a notebook during class. I feel like Southern Gothic is always really the only way I can think to describe like what appeals to me because it feels like home and it's like a little bit creepy from the outside but so comforting to me like like slightly things that are a little uncanny I really like and collections I feel like collections are really present in all of my art collecting fabric collecting dolls collecting words, collecting, like, I don't know. I've always been a collector, especially with anything that feels like at all emotional. Both Carly and Jake are really good at being themselves. They always strive to live in the moment that way and create art that, that has that piece of them in it, wherever they are in life. When people say that we look like we smell bad all the time in any like press photo we do. Is it whenever like Pitchfork or Stereo Gum like post it on their Instagram, like all of the comments are like, I know what they smell like. I've been specifically singled out for looking like I smell like milk. <clears throat> the funniest thing I'm seeing is like people are saying we're like hobbits because me and Zandy and Alan and Ethan all have similar hair right now. People talk a lot about how we're from the south. People are used to seeing bands from I guess other places or maybe just bigger cities than Asheville. 
But I don't know. I don't. I don't love to think about our reputation too much, or like that kind of stuff. Oh shit! I thought I got one. <laughs> oh, where's the fucking fish? We're gonna catch a freaking fish today, Zach. We're not really catching any fish today, and I think that's really funny, because according to Jake, he's he's never not caught a fish. Women hate me. Fish fuck me. All right, I think we should give these fish a break over here. <laughs> They're exhausted. They're full. That's what fishing's all about. I think so, right? It's, the fi it's called fishing, not catching. Like my idea of success was just like playing big old shows and then like not having to work a lame job. Yeah. And then like kicking it with your friends all the time, which pretty much is, was right. <laughs> I mean, I never like had any good idea of how to go get there on my own. Yeah, I think we're well on our way, <laughs> which yeah. is like something I never, I don't know, really, I, I would dream of it, but I never actually really expected it because every adult in your life is like, don't quit your J job, dude, like, for good reason. I mean, this is definitely my idea of success, and the more time I'm out here, the more I'm like, I don't, I don't need much else. <laughs> yeah. Wednesday won't be at Hawk Creek much longer. Neither will anyone else I know. So I'm really glad I got a chance to come back and film a little because it's a special place and I don't think I've really got the words for it yet. I don't think Carly and the band do either, but that's not really the point. The point is more about feeling it and I know everyone's feeling a lot right now. Home isn't really gone, um, it's just going to be different now. Paper. 